Hello again, everyone, and welcome to day 10. Uh, congratulations to all of you. You've made it through basically uh, one third now of this journey through Eucharistic glory, you know, this little pilgrimage we've been going on. Um, so now we've had uh, two great saints. <laughs> now we're <laughs> moving into another one. So St. Therese of Lisieux is our, you know, our guide and our patroness for today. Um, and we have some great ones coming up ahead, you know, the rest of this week. But the thing that I just hope that y'all stick with and, and reflect upon that Matt kind of brings out in the book today is the effect that a saint can have on the life of another person, which ended up being another saint. And if you look in history, a lot of the saints always had um, like fellows around them. Like it, there's oftentimes there's a, there's groupings of saints that, that became saints together. They spurred each other on, you know, kind of the stuff that we hear St. Paul talk about with the early Christians, they should be um, doing that for one another. Like we should be achieving holiness together because we help one another be obedient to the Lord and to his will in our lives. And when you see somebody else actively doing that, it can inspire us to do that. And so that's what Therese did for Mother Teresa. Like she, they never met ever. They were different, completely different time periods. And yet St. Therese, her little way of love had a powerful impact on Mother Teresa and and really inspired her to live the way she was living. It just really spoke to her. And that's what the saints always have the potential to do for us. So that's why, like, you might hear me say somewhat often, you know, like, know the saints, because not every saint is going to speak to you. Like, you might read Therese of Lisieux and think it's great, but not, like, appropriate to your life. Like, maybe that type of um, spirituality just doesn't make sense for, for your current life. And maybe Augustine does, or Aquinas does, or um, St. Catherine of Siena does, or Rita of Kasha, you know, our patroness speaks to you and to your your current situation. Um, so just keep that in mind, you know, as we journey through this, you know, the Eucharist always connects us all together, which is a really beautiful thing about our faith is unity. You know, we pray that at every Mass, we're, we're always praying for greater unity amongst Christians, amongst the different Christian churches. And then amongst the, every human in the world, like whether they're Christian or not, we, we pray and desire unity. Because when Jesus makes that prayer that they may all be one, he's not talking about the 40,000 Christian churches. He's talking about humanity. There was no, he created the first Christian church, the Catholic church. So there was, no, when he says that, it's, you know, we can think in our mind that it's like this huge, you know, division we now see in the Christian church. But that's not the prayer of Christ. That it is that we be one, but it's in a more general sense that even the atheist, the one who knows who knows not God, um, that they might be one with us one day, and that's going to be um, from our our lives. You know, so let the saints speak to you. Let them um, inspire you to live a holy way of life, knowing knowing that it's possible for us, and then going and doing it, and knowing that they're with us every step of the way, just as the Lord Himself and His Eucharistic presence is with us every day. So enjoy day 10, enjoy your, your prayer today and reflection, and we'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.